everybody. I am so excited to be reviewing Dune Part 2 by Dennis Villanueva, starring Timothée Chalamet and Zendaya. I am a massive Dune fan from way back when I was a kid reading Frank Herbert's novels. So you better believe that I have been looking forward to this film forever. Well, really ever since I saw the end of the first film. But you know, it does Dune Part 2 fall into that sequel trap or does it live up to expectations? Before we get into it, please remember to hit subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and let me know that you like it. All right. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. All right. So let's get to the review. So Doom Part 2 continues the story of Paul Atreides as he joins Wichiani and the Fremen as he learns the way of the desert. Meanwhile, Baron Harkonnen gathers his forces and digs in, trying to squash the Fremen uprising, even as rumors of the Fremen known as Muad'Dib are rising, stirring the people and giving hope to the masses who believe in him, as well as those who don't believe in him and the prophecy. So these two forces come to a head in a series of confrontations that absolutely jettison this film into the best picture of the year so far. So the cast, it is insane from Timothée Chalamet to Tendaya to Rebecca Ferguson, Josh Brolin, Austin Butler, Florence Pugh, Dave Bautista, Christopher Walken, Stellan Skarsgård, and so many others. There is so much talent here that nobody is a standout. Everyone rises to their role. And the result is a cast that could have delivered this film on an empty soundstage. But the soundstage, it really wasn't empty. In fact, the film was a sweeping visual and audio success. It was a joy to behold. The cinematography was spectacular. The color palette, the costume design, the sweeping sandy dunes and the glorious blue skies above, they all added to the visual sense of the planet Arrakis. Everything felt so industrial on the Harkonnen side and so gritty and dry on the Fremen side. And somehow these two visual senses, these two visual effects were seamlessly blended together in this perfect harmony. Now, let's talk about the sound. You have got to see Doom Part 2 in a Dolby Cinema. The sound is astounding. You can hear the world of Arrakis around you from the blowing sand to the guttural grinding of the spice harvesting machines. It's fantastic. All of this just acts as a backdrop, though. All of that is a backdrop to the action on screen and the story that unfolds. The giant machines, the battles, the warm rides. This film delivered everything on top of everything that you are expecting. You get the full scope of civilization on the planet, as well as within the wider universe, as it brings the emperor and the Bene Gesserit and the specters of the other power players and families into the story. It's really starting to pick up that, that kind of grand sweeping feel. And what worked especially well was the deepening of Paul's relationship with the Fremen and the desert as he learned how they lived and how they survived. And his relationship with his family becomes even more strained because of what, what his mother's doing and what is, mm, all right, spoilers, can't say that, um, what his family's doing. And the thing is, it really does put an extra layer into the story itself, especially where the prophecy is concerned and where he is trying to choose his own path. Uh, but it gets more and more and more difficult as the conflict 
kind of comes to a head. His internal conflict, though, is always really front and center. And his character growth that we see in the books isn't really given quite the same depth in the film. But, you know, I don't think that's as big of a deal because you have Timothy Chalamet, who really just overcomes that obstacle through sheer talent. I mean, he acts it out, even if there, even if there are all these extra little scenes kind of showing his moments of character growth. And, you know, as he gets, as he goes through the story, as Paul Atreides goes through the story, and you see him kind of saying one thing and and trying to move in that direction, and yet forces of the world kind of pull him in another direction, you get this really uncomfortable kind of tearing feeling inside where you can see him starting to split. And that's really interesting. And I think Timothée really does a great job with that. And I think Zendaya's reaction to that as Chiani is perfect. Like they work really, really well together on screen. A great duo. And some of the best parts of the film really are the battles, the scenes in which the Fremen go up against the spice harvesters and the Harkonnen fighters are absolutely epic in scale. The retribution is epic in scale and the hand-to-hand -hand combat at the end, it's superb. And it will leave you on the edge of your seat from the moment it starts to the end and even beyond because you finish the show, you finish the movie and you don't want to get up. You want to sit there and you want more stuff to happen. It's fantastic. I swear to God, I don't even know. Is this even a review or is this just me praising, you know, Dennis Villanueva to high heaven? Because this is the movie that I had hoped it would be. And whatever little foibles it has, little story knits here and there, whatever little little things that you might come up with that are, you know, you think are problematic with, you know, little CGI knits. Honestly, honestly, it's it's okay. Cause this film is that good. It is a step up from the first film. It really dives into the world of Arrakis and the Fremen and the coming conflict. It's, I don't know. I think it's the best film of the year so far. I loved it. And finally, I don't think you can review this film without at least mentioning that it truly is a case study in human manipulation through religion and how you can control the actions of your friends and allies, as well as your enemies through careful patience and crafting of religious beliefs of others in order to get them to do and to respond the way you want them to, even without them realizing it, even without them knowing that that's what's happening. And what's more powerful is you really also see how, you know, once it becomes part of a person uh, and their religion, even if they do see it happening, they don't care. I mean, it's this really amazing look into the spiritual life and how it can be manipulated. And that is honestly super scary and really uncomfortable to see. And I'm really glad that they put this into the film because it was very strong in the book and it's very strong in the film without being in your face about it, which is perfect, absolutely perfect. Overall, I highly recommend Dune Part 2. Your money is going to be well spent on this theater ticket. And you really do need to go see it in the theater. I promise you, you won't, you won't be sorry. Because it is that good of a film. 
science fiction fans are going to love it. This is the sequel, folks. This is the sequel we were waiting for. And I love it when studios and directors and writers get it right. And boy, did they get it right with Dune Part 2. So when you go see this film, let me know what you think. Did you like it? What do you think is coming next? Because there definitely has to be a third film. It's you, we've got to see a third film here. So if you like this review, please do give it a thumbs up. Again, you will make my day, absolutely. And be sure to hit subscribe for more videos because there are more videos coming out. Thanks everybody, I really appreciate it. I love seeing you here. Happy viewing, have fun at the theater, and I can't wait to see what you think of this film. All right, everyone, I'll see you soon. Bye.